What's good? We back. We're talking about Gennady Golovkin. We know that Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin uh, two has been agreed upon, and um, the location is up for grabs. Apparently, it's supposed to go to the highest bidder, which will be between the MGM um, and T-Mobile Arena. Um, MGM owns, you know, I think some of the T-Mobile Arena, and it's going up against New York City's Madison Square Garden. Um, I've seen some information that says Madison Square Garden is is preparing to offer a huge offer for the rematch, and we'll see what happens. I, I think it's going to end up in Vegas, but that I think if it ends up in New York City, I think that's a huge win for Team Triple G. Um, and we'll see, but I'm here talking about uh, what is, t- is, is, is Team Triple G doing for Gennady Golovkin? You know, what is K2 Tom Loeffler, is, you know, whoever his manager is doing for him? Because they're not doing nothing. I mean, last time out, he got a $3 million guarantee to Canelo Alvarez, $5 million guarantee. And we know Canelo probably got the line share of those, the back end money. Um, I can't find the final numbers of what they walked away with. Um, but they did 1.3 million and I don't know how the numbers, you know, break down, but you know, I'll leave that to the, the, um, financial gurus out there in the boxing world. And if you know what the final numbers are, you got to, you know, guesstimation, let me know. But, you know, for me, it's like, he 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 got jobbed and he's gonna get jobbed again at the negotiation table. And say what you want to say about a Bob Arum or Al Heyman. They're not gonna let their fighters get took to school versus a novice in the negotiations like Oscar De La Hoya. And it's crazy that, you know, Triple G got nothing, you know, practically in his fight. Maybe he walked last. I don't remember, but maybe he walked last. His name was second on was was second on the poster, you know. He was treated like a challenger throughout the whole fight. You know he was. He was weighed in. He weighed in first. He probably had the pick of the. He probably got the pick of the last locker room. He didn't probably get a ring size. Obviously, he didn't have any input on the judges. Um, obviously, he made a lower purse level. Obviously, I know he had less money on the back end. I mean. Basically, you know, he was grabbed by his collar and told him not to face Billy Joe Saunders for undisputed champion or lose a shot at a guy that has no belt in Canelo Alvarez. People say, well, he has the ring belt. The ring belt isn't a requirement to be an undisputed champion. You know, he let he got rooked by Oscar De La Hoya and his whole team got rooked. They got rooked in the negotiations. A dude that's bringing three championship belts to the table and it's seen as the number one middleweight in the world by damn near everybody, including myself, doesn't have his name first on the poster, doesn't make the most money, doesn't get, doesn't probably get the walk in class, you know, doesn't get to pick the ring size, doesn't get to fight at the venue that he wants to fight at. He's told who, what, where, and what time to show up for the fight. And probably told what type of gloves to wear as well, you know. And at the end of the day, I mean, why are you paying these guys a percentage if they're not giving you, you know, the the edge in negotiations? Basically, they just being told to make the fight by any means necessary. And a lot of foreign fighters are getting jobs like that, man. You know, look at Kovalev. You know, he didn't make a, a he didn't make anything in the second fight versus uh, Andre Ward because his whole purse was based on how the pay per view did. He got the lion's share of the back end money, which the pay per view and and it didn't even sell out. It did terrible. Andre Ward walked around, walked away with almost over $13 million between the two fights. Kovalev might have walked away with a million, if that. Look at that discrepancy right there, you know. And, you know, a lot of people think, you know, you know, most black channels, which I'm not even a black channel. I'm just a pro-boxing channel and pro-life channel and just, you know, a truth and facts channel. But most people think, you know, when black guys come in here, it's the bash the foreign guys. I speak up for the foreign guys. They get the shittiest of the translators, you know. They don't get the best of the best. You know, if they had better translators, I think the Cubans would be more alike. But that's on them. And this dude is getting, he's gonna, I, I guarantee you he got jobbed at the negotiation table again. This guy continues to pass up history to to basically play with his boxing fate and his boxing legacy versus a guy who's known to have some pull 
you know, at in you know in the boxing world, are right, you played with fire once with Canelo Alvarez? You got a draw when you clearly when a lot of people clearly thought you won, and you thought you won, and most of your team didn't think it was close. So you're gonna enter the fire again, sign the contract, and trust Golden Boy to give the fight to the best offer venue between Master Square Garden and, and Las Vegas. You know what the answer is going to be. You know they're going to try to spin it some type of way, even if they had to put their own money and had a fight back in Vegas to put it in the MGM's hand to get the fight there. Because Canelo Alvarez has never fought on the East Coast. He's never. He fought in that Mexico, you know, Texas, and Las Vegas, that Southwest and that West California area. And there's a reason for that, you know. They're not making that guy go to the New York City to face Gennady Golovkin in, the line, in his lines then. And if that's what they're telling him and they're holding hope and they're crossing their fingers on that, look how the negotiations have went for him. Not good. He's got slaughtered at the negotiation tables. And I know the main sticking point was like, you only did 150K and 100K pay-per-view and all that. You know, Canelo is the, the star here. And at the end of the day, they treat him as the star. He's getting a two or three point advantage before the first bell even rings. You know, and obviously Gennady Golovkin loves the money and the financial implication of the fight. More than he want more than his more than he wants to be undisputed champion, and he's selling his boxing soul and his boxing lineage and his his Hall of Fame resume and, and adding on to his 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 legacy. He's selling that for a couple few million dollars once again. He wants to play with fire again, and you keep playing with fire and you keep playing with it. You keep touching. You keep touching. It. After a while. You know, that friction is going to catch on your ass and, and burn you. And in the rematch with Canelo Alvarez, if he get burnt, I don't feel sorry for him. He sold himself out for the cash. You know, okay, you got the fight with Canelo. You see what happened. Go be undisputed. He should have tried to be undisputed in the beginning. And that was his selling point for a long time. And that's my gripe with him right now. He wanted to be undisputed. He wanted all the belts. In fact, he just wanted all the money. He just wanted the money. The money was the most important thing to him. And it is what it is. And if he wants to keep playing with, with, with Golden Boy and Canelo Alvarez, I have no sympathy if he get robbed again. And his team is getting robbed for pennies and peanuts anyway. We gone.